We have been covering a lot of newer games and newer releases here on the channel, but let's go back to the PS3 era for a bit and continue our Sly Cooper journey. Now I'm about to make a very bold statement right here. No game is ever perfect, but Sly 2 Band of Thieves, in my eyes, is as close to a perfect game as I have ever played. From this game's emotional and subversive story, its excellent, excellent feeling platforming, its incredible voice acting, charming sound design, stylized presentation, and more, I feel like this masterful sequel created by Sucker Punch Productions is as close to a perfect game as I'm ever going to play in this lifetime. It's just that good. That's not to say there aren't things I could nitpick about it, but this game dropped on the PS2 in 2004 and just enthralled me to my very core. And it's a game I frequently go back to on a regular basis. And with the release of the Sly Collection, brought to us thanks to the efforts of Sanzaru Games, more people got a chance to enjoy it when it dropped on the PS3. They also modernized it, adding trophy support so we could cover it here on Platinum Hunters. If you have played in Platinum the first game, I don't think you're going to find too much difference with the second game's trophy run. We will cover it here in this video, but we are going to have to take a different approach thanks to the way the trophy list is structured. But really, the joy of making this episode for you guys is getting to play this almost perfect game once again. This is... Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. If you haven't played the first game, I got that trophy guide on the channel right now and I really implore you to play that first and then come back to this one. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more trophy guide videos just like this one because you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. Sly 2's trophy run is very, very simple, even more simpler than Sly 1's. Essentially, this trophy guide is just going to be so you can put it in your collection. All you need to do is play through all 8 episodes of the story, collecting the host of the gang's power-ups from the Thiefnet store inside your base. Each episode will introduce new ones to the mix, and I'll tell you which ones to buy for the trophies. There are some trophies for having a fat wallet of coins and a few clue trophies, but that's about it. Again, it's very easy to get this plat, but the pleasure here is in playing this masterpiece of action platforming. Listen, I'm going to be really frank with you. For once, I'm actually going to cover all the story trophies in this guide, or else this would have been a pretty quick episode, fam. And Trophy Papa has to make sure this episode is over 10 minutes because Clockwork, aka the YouTube algorithm, is always watching. So what I'm trying to say is there are some big ass spoilers here in this episode. Also, you can play this game on both the PS3 and PS Vita. Those versions of the game increased considerably in value, so PS Now is an option if you have a good internet connection. Although, at some point after the recording of this video, PS Now will cease to exist in the form we know it as we are anticipating Project Spartacus. Hopefully, the Sly Collection is included somewhere in that project, making it more accessible and hopefully cheaper to play. We are all set to start this trophy guide and as always, there are more Helpful resources in the description below to assist you. We have one trophy to cover in the prologue in which Sly Cooper games always have amazing opening heists to help you warm up before you tackle the main game. The trophy in question is called Fiery Fox and you will get this trophy after you complete the prologue heist and escape Carmelita Fox once again. She's always on our tail and we always escape her. But that's not the last time you'll be seeing her, trust me. 
Now we are off to Paris to find our first set of clockwork parts, the clockwork tail feathers. Before we dive into the story and upgrade trophies, there are two sets of trophies I want you to get out of the way early in this platinum run. First, there are these three clue bottle trophies on screen now. Every episode will have 30 clue bottles you can find in the main area, and finding all 30 will allow you to open a vault hidden somewhere in the world, like in this case, Dimitri's office. The vaults are sweet because they will give you a Master Thief upgrade that you cannot buy on ThiefNet. Now as far as the trophies go, you only need to find all 30 clues once and none of the trophies require you to open any of the vaults. That's a bit disappointing, but oh well. That's how Sanzaru decided to make this trophy list. I have included a video of how to collect all of these clues here in Paris, but you can get these trophies in any of the episodes so long as you find all 30 clues in one of the episodes. The other set of trophies I want you to focus on early relates to coin collecting. These trophies on screen now will be awarded to you when you accumulate more wealth by finding or stealing more coins. Normally I would tell you to collect these trophies as you play through the game but these coin trophies are not cumulative and you actually need 1500 coins at one time to unlock the last trophy. If you put this trophy off you will probably end up spending them on upgrades. So either roam around Paris looking for enemies to pickpocket or hold off on buying anything till you hit the 1,500 coins. Of course you can get these trophies at the end of your playthrough if you want, but it will add extra time on your playthrough as you'll need to grind out the coins at the end. But thanks to my suggestion, now you have some fat pockets that you can use towards buying these two ThiefNet upgrades. There will be quite a few upgrades to purchase, but I'm only going to talk about the ones you need to purchase to get trophies. First, you can get the Remote Trigger Trophy by purchasing Bentley's Trigger Bomb, and then grab the He Is Flaming Trophy nabbing Murray's Fist of Flame upgrade. These power-ups are the bread and butter for the brains and the brawn of the operation. Very handy out in the field and definitely ones you will be using. You're all geared up, so let's talk about the two missions in this episode that have trophies. First, there's the Art Snob Trophy for completing the mission called Bug Dimitri's Office. This is a sly mission where the goal is to swap a painting in Dimitri's office with a fake that will eavesdrop on the slime ball. There's a bit of a climb to get in, but maneuvering around a sly never gets old. Then the last trophy to get in Paris is Reptilian Robber where we will fight the sleazy shyster himself, Dimitri. Let's dance as we dodge electro shots and shut down his money printing operations. Not a tough boss by any means, but watch out for his counterattacks. For a first boss fight, this one is greasy sweet, and I love every minute of it. Dimitri is an awesome character, and we will see him again in the next game. Next, we are headed to India to find our next set of clockwork parts. A huge grand party is being held here with the who's who of guests living lavishly in the face of the clockwork wings. We need a plan to grab them and it's gotta be done right in front of both the Claw Gang and Interpol. Let's gear up first by surfing on ThiefNet. It's Sly's turn to get an upgrade and the Artful Dodger Trophy when you purchase the Sly Combat Dodge, which is another Sly move staple to have. Then, our only story related trophy to worry about comes closer to the end of the heist with the mission Tango with Carmelita. You'll get the Learn to Foxtrot Trophy wooing the party guests dancing with Inspector Fox. This is an absolutely iconic mission in the Sly franchise and a very fun one, pressing the right buttons to the music, making the right dance moves. So long as you don't miss too many of the button prompts, you'll end this tango with a trophy award winning finish. We'll grab the clockwork wings and then head into episode 3 as we continue our pursuit of Rajan and the clockwork heart that is in his possession. Rajan is pissed that we swiped those two clockwork parts and he has retreated deeper into his compound in the jungles of India. You know the drill, 
hop on ThiefNet and get the Someone Call a Doctor trophy by purchasing the Snooze Bomb for Bentley. It's a cool upgrade, but I prefer to use the Sleep Darts instead as you don't want to be anywhere near these enemies as Bentley. Then our only story trophy here is squaring off one on one with the big cat himself. Watch out, it's spicy, is the trophy that will be awarded to you after you beat down Rajan. It's a much tougher fight than the first boss as Rajan hits pretty hard if you're not dodging his attacks. Plus you have to watch out for his electric attacks that electrify the water around you and you have to step on these lily pads. After you defeat him you'll get the trophy, get betrayed and then things get very dark and dreary from here. The first three episodes got you acclimatized and warmed up but now this is where things ramp up big time. The stakes start to get much higher and the lines of allegiance start to get fuzzy for some of the characters and the story starts to get much more personal for our heroes. You start the chapter with Murray and Sly in prison and it's up to Bentley to break them out starting with Sly. In the second mission called Train Hack, you will get the Train Jumper trophy after hacking all six terminals and using the train to help bust Sly out of jail. They feature the Bentley hacking missions and I absolutely love doing these. Piloting around as this digital tank gunning down threats and infiltrating these mainframes is so much fun. When you have Sly back on the roster, hop on ThiefNet and grab his alarm clock upgrade for the Rise and Shine trophy. It's a nice little tool to distract these guards who have a combined total of two brain cells to rub together. Plus, you'll need it for some of the missions that come later on in this world. The only other story trophy to worry about here comes in the mission close to Contessa. For the Spider Legs trophy, you have to pickpocket three tank keys off of the Contessa, the main baddie for this area. I mean, come on, she just looks evil and Interpol hired her? Do they not do background checks? No, that's not a thing? Well, you're gonna need to get up close to her, getting rid of her guards first and pickpocketing those keys because you're gonna need the tank to get Murray out of jail. Well, to the shock of nobody, but Interpol themselves, we find out the Contessa is working with the Claw Gang, using the spices Rajan was collecting to experiment with people. Plus, with both Clockwork Eyes in her possession, she has upped the ante on that. The game can tackle some pretty heavy subjects, but always presents them with its signature stylized adventurous kind of way. Let's grab the two ThiefNet trophies to kick off this episode. First, there's the trophy Big Spender by buying Sly's Paraglider Upgrade, which is extra handy for flying around and traversing the locations easier. It will also be mandatory later for some missions, so it's one of the few upgrades that you need to buy to progress. The other trophy is Pink Fire Flop for purchasing Murray's Raging Inferno Flop Upgrade. Now you will bring down the heat on whoever is below you when you're using your Belly Flop Attack. The three story trophies we need for this episode are all found in the final big heist mission, Operation High Road. You'll get the Jailbird trophy closer to the beginning of the mission when you break Carmelita out of her restraints when you hack the terminal as Bentley. Then later in the same mission you will fight the Contessa to keep possession of the Clockwork Eye for the Creepy Crawly trophy. Overall this part of the fight is not that difficult. At all, as she will predictively rush you and you just have to keep out of her way and whack her. You'll have to defeat the Contessa in this fight to get this trophy, but it ain't over yet as she pulls a fast one on you and gets possession of the Clockwork Eye. Then you'll go round two against her for the more Creepy Crawlies trophy and this time she is using the powers of the eye. The fight is similar to the first one but now she has some new attacks that will try to mind control you. Use the same strategy as before and make sure you dodge those mind control attacks and you will finally put an end to her psychological torment. We have three more riveting episodes to cover left in the trophy guide and I hope you have been enjoying it so far. Be sure to hit the like button to let me know you are still here as we head to our next location which happens to be my homeland. We have arrived in our next location where there are clockwork parts to swipe and it happens to be in the northern parts of Canada. 
but there ain't no bacon or poutine to be found in these parts, eh? Just one angry lumberjack named John Bizon and his trains that's being powered using the clockwork lungs and stomach. That's gross, but they work pretty damn well. On Thiefnet in the hideout, you have to pick up a pair of trophies. Sneaky will be awarded to you when you buy Sly's Silent Obliteration Power Up. Now your stealth takedowns won't alert all the nearby guards when you use them, so this thing is awesome. Also buy Bentley's Hover Pack to get the Rockin' It Shell Style Trophy. This power up gives Bentley some much needed verticality and makes sneaking around and traversal much easier for the less physically capable turtle. Unfortunately it gets much worse for the poor guy later on, but we're not there yet. Let's focus on the current mission. Our first trophy here is called Jailed Cotton Candy and it's found in the mission A Friend in Need. Murray has been captured by Carmelita Fox and put in a cage. A little rudimentary, but it gets the job done I guess. As Sly, you're gonna need to sneak up on Inspector Fox and pickpocket three keys off of her just like the way you swipe them off of the Contessa. Free Murray and get the trophy. You're gonna need the brawny pink hippo for the next trophy called Bear Hug. During the mission Bear Cub Kidnapping, you're going to need to grab these two bear cubs and use them as bait for Mama Bear to come stomp in and break this cage around this minecart. This isn't the most elegant plan, but I guess it gets the job done. Plus, it's a funny sight to see Murray carrying a restless bear cub with his bare hands. Get it? No? Not good? Alright, our last two trophies for this episode come one after another in the high stakes excellent Operation Choo Choo. Neela just won't give up and to get the trophy upset stomach, you'll have to shoot her down using Bentley's RC Chopper. There will be two phases to the battle with a slice section placed right in between. These missions with multiple members of the gang really ratchet up the tension and this aerial battle over the train is certainly a tense one. You have tons of attacks to dodge as you shoot down her plane which has a lot of health. Sometimes she will fly lower than you and you can drop bombs on her for extra damage. Shooting her down will get you the trophy and you will also get the tummy trouble trophy with it as that's the end of the mission and you now have the clockwork stomach. John Bizon is not going to be happy about his iron horses being destroyed and we will see more of him in episode 7. Despite being very cheesed that we messed with his choo choo trains, John Bizon is still running his lumberjack games and placing the clockwork talents as the grand prize. So we are of course going to enter and get those parts. This episode doesn't have any thief net upgrade trophies so we will go right into the two story trophies. The first is called Moosehead. You'll have to grab it in the tag team mission called RC Combat Club with Sly and Murray. Sly will have to grab the Moosehead helmet on the mantle inside the club because Murray will need it to go undercover. In the real world, the guards would probably see right through this disguise. But also in the real world, I'm pretty sure hippos and mooses wouldn't be bipedal. Maneuver around the club without getting caught and get that moose head. The trophy will pop right before you start the RC combat part of the mission. Then the second trophy is gold medal winner for defeating John Bizon in his boss fight with Bentley? The turtle is getting in on the action and he's fighting back using the different traps found in this logging house. Essentially, you will need to keep your distance, all fight, and lead John Bizon into the traps. Don't even bother using any of your other gadgets because none of them will work. Once you take him out using your brains to triumph over Brawn, you will get the trophy. We are getting very close to the end as we head into our final episode. We have stowed away inside a battery silo and on the way to our Peugeot's blimp to collect the rest of the clockwork parts only to find that the hateful owl is almost rebuilt and with the parts the gang collected being taken from them it's almost certain clockwork will be reborn unless they do something about it. The morale on the team may be at an all time low but they know the weight of their mission and what they need to do to get the job done. 
when you get back to the hideout, collect your final upgrade trophy, you look great in pink, for purchasing Murray's Diablo Fire Slam. It's a great technique, but I wish we got it earlier as it's pretty damn powerful. Then our last two trophies for this trophy guide will come right at the very end of the game. Neela has commandeered the clockwork parts and has become one with the owl to become Clockla. And the TikTok trophy will be awarded to you when you defeat her in the final mission showdown with Clockla. Sly will be paragliding to the bird and taking out the clockwork eyes. Once she crash lands, the trophy will pop, but we are not done yet. There's one more trophy left called Bird Dentist. Once Clockla crash lands, we have to put an end to this hate once and for all. Murray will have to dodge lasers and then pry open the mechanical owl's beak. Then Bentley can go in and remove the hate chip that is found inside its mouth to finally put an end to this damn mechanical monster. You will get the trophy after you remove the chip at a cost. That's everything you need to know for the Platinum Trophy, but the prize is certainly bittersweet. At the cost of the team, no. The cost of their family becoming fractured and broken, the gang was able to put an end to clockwork. This game ends off on a sour note, but there is always Sly 3 to find out what becomes of our legendary trio. But if you have bought lots of upgrades, pickpocketed many guards, took down the claw gang, ended generations of hate, and collected all of the trophies, congratulations! You will be awarded the Unlikely Bandit Platinum Trophy for Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Overall, this trophy guide for this game is a breeze and pretty much just coincides with the story. As I said before, it's just to put it in your collection, but that's okay. This trophy is gonna look nice right beside the Platinum for Sly Cooper 1, and I'm not too sure which one is easier at the end of the day. If you want a more difficult Sly Platinum, you're gonna get it when we get to Sly 3, and we will be covering that plat in due time. But really, when it comes to Sly 2, just enjoy this roller coaster ride of a story that teaches you about how the bonds of friendship are tested. In their pursuit of something, it's possible to fracture those bonds. By the end of this story, you see that and it will carry into the next game. We have two more Sly Cooper games to cover here on Platinum Hunters, and if rumors end up panning out the way I think they will, we might just see a modern return of the gang very soon. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I definitely wanted to go back to the PS3 era and cover something retro. And I heard you guys in that community post. I have a few more ideas now of what I can cover from the PS3 era. So definitely you're going to have to subscribe to the channel to find out what those are. Don't go peeking in the community post to see what they are. I hope your next trophy hunting heist goes incredibly well and peace out.